For some time now, ISIS has been a major focus of security discussions. But what is the extent of the ISIS threat beyond its current presence in Iraq and Syria? During a recent Wilson Center event, panelists considered the possibility that the threat posed by ISIS has been overestimated, comparing the Islamic State to the mythological Icarus whose wings burned when he flew too close to the sun, and suggesting that the rise of ISIS faces a similar fate. That's the focus of this edition of Rewind. So everyone is talking about ISIS these days, but there is one dimension to the ISIS story, uh, perhaps, that has not been covered all that much, and that is the extent of the ISIS threat beyond the areas of its current quote-unquote caliphate in Iraq and Syria. So ISIS wants you to think that it's everywhere because it, you know, that's what gives it this perception of momentum. Whereas, as Tom said, Al-Qaeda doesn't necessarily want the spotlight as much. They want you to think that they're nowhere. And the Iraq war really was a formative experience for both of these groups in terms of their approaches to the media is, you know, the research concludes that we have to be careful about, you know, a rush to coronate ISIS. I think we have to be equally careful about ascribing to it a, a, a broad campaign plan that, that has really been thought through and is, has uh, generated uh, sufficient controls on these high risk areas and aspects that I've just discussed. Okay? They are clearly a competitor in the jihadist space. Okay? Um, but they remain a competitor that lacks a lot of the tactical acumen of Al-Qaeda. And I would argue also at this point still remains a terrorist actor that lacks the strict credibility of becoming a global catastrophic terrorist actor like Al-Qaeda had become under bin Laden and Zawahiri. I think one is important to consider that ISIS, like Icarus, is flying high right now. Okay? But a lot of the points that I've just made are points of the wax that keep the feathers on the wings, and those are near the sun, and they're melting, and they're being put under more duress. And so we shouldn't count Al-Qaeda out yet at this point, nor should we count ISIS in as the dominant problem, either for our own terrorism policies or for the wider world network. Uh, ISIS has facilitated a huge change in the way Al-Qaeda is being seen. And in about three years, four years maybe, maybe a little less, we'll be talking about this. We're saying, how did we get to the point where Al-Qaeda is able to operate so openly? But it's happening right now, and we're not paying attention because we don't realize that ISIS is Icarus. Because we think it's just going to keep flying upward and upward, and eventually it'll reach the sun, and what will we do then? And that, I think, is the real danger here. We shouldn't, by any means, say that uh, Al-Qaeda is less of a threat. I don't, I don't think that's true. I think that Al-Qaeda has a longer-term vision, uh, and it, it is uh, very much enjoying the benefits of having the international community focus its attention upon ISIS. I think what we should be worried about is that as the two groups are competing with each other for recruits and for uh, influence, they're actually creating a net increase in the terrorist problem that we're seeing. Uh, and so we can talk about how tenable ISIS is and how long its efforts for global, uh, for global influence and territorial control will last. But at the end of the day, uh, ISIS has provided a new model for jihadism uh, and a new model for extremism that will outlast even ISIS as an organization. This dig digital campaign, the propaganda campaign, is something that I think will certainly be taken up. And we've seen uh, Al-Qaeda actually change its focus and, and talk a little bit about how important uh, media campaigns are. So they're influencing each other in a way that ultimately uh, means that we'll have to think of strategies to defeat both of them, not only just to look at one or the other. I think, as I mentioned in the monograph, um, this is a process that still has a ways to go. It's in, I think I agree with the other panelists, it's in no way clear yet at this point. Um, but I do think I put a lot more emphasis on what I've read, what I've gotten as far as translations, and interpretations of what Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi has claimed for a desired timeline. I think it is, is correct to say that the IS Caliphate believes itself established in Iraq <coughs> and Syria, but it also believes that when it declares these waliyats, it's building within a five-year time frame this wider constellation where it will have to have shown territorial gains. Mm. And I highlight this three times in the monograph. They are about not virtual gains not virtual involvement, they are about physical space. 
For more information on ISIS and related regional and security topics, visit wilsoncenter.org. Click the Research tab and search under the Asia program.